Chapter 65, The Invitation Roz was the first to arrive at the next dawn truce. She had an, import, an, an important announcement to make. The robot patiently waited in the great meadow as the sky slowly brightened and the animals slowly gathered. And once everyone was milling around and chattering, Roz began speaking in her perkiest voice. Pardon the interruption, if I could please have a moment of your time. The crowd settled down and listened to their robot friend. We made it through a terrible winter. A new generation of youngsters is arriving. And my son, Bright Bill, has just returned to the island with his flock. I think we can all agree there is much to celebrate. So in addition to the dawn truce this morning, I would like us to have another truce this evening. We can call it the evening truce, or better yet, the party truce. The crowd began chattering with excitement. I have planned a celebration, Roz continued, and you are all invited. I will take care of everything. Just please meet back here at dusk. Oh, and I have a little surprise. Actually, it's not little. It's quite large. The point is, I have planned a celebration and I hope to see you all there. Sounds great, Roz, but I'm afraid there's one problem with your plan, Mr. Beaver blinked his beady eyes. The moon won't be out this evening, so it'll be too dark for some of us to see. You are half correct, said Roz. Tonight will be moonless but it will not be dark, I promise. Now, if you will excuse me, I must prepare for our party. I will see everyone back here at dusk. Goodbye. Oh, I wonder what the surprise is, Zebby. Chapter 66, The Celebration. Dawn turned to day, day turned to dusk, and just as Roz had asked, Animals were gathering again in the great meadow. Word had spread across the island that the robot was throwing a party, and everyone wanted to see what the fuss was about. The fuss seemed to be about a giant stack of wood. I wonder what that is. Roz had spent the day collecting logs and branches and stacking them in a perfect massive tower. The animals crowded around it, trying to imagine its purpose, and then they saw a golden light flickering in the distance. Roz emerged from the dark forest. In her hand was a flaming stick, which she held like a torch. She was camouflaged in thick mud and clusters of flowers. But her camouflage wasn't for hiding. It was her party dress. The animals watched as the robot glided across the meadow, surrounded by a warm glow. Thank you all for being here, she said as she joined the crowd. One year ago, I awoke on the shore of this island. I was just a machine. I functioned, but you, my friends and my family, you have taught me how to live. And so I thank you. No, thank you, Roz, shouted a voice. You have also taught me to be wild, said the robot. So let us all celebrate life and wildness together. At those words, Roz heaved her torch high into the air. It soared up and up and up and landed on the very top of the wooden tower. A ball of fire burst towards the night sky, and suddenly the meadow was bathed in firelight. Hundreds of shining eyes watched as bright flames crept down the sides of the tower, and embers floated away on the breeze. The animals stepped toward the bonfire, eager to feel its warmth, and then they stepped back, afraid of feeling too much. And soon everyone was moving. The deer started leaping. The foxes started trotting. 
the snakes slithered, and the insects buzzed, and the fish jumped up from the river. Bright Bill led all the birds into the air, where they wheeled around the bonfire like a tornado of feathers. Roz sprang into a wild dance, her shaggy dress shaking and swishing with each movement. It was a wild party. And it took our robot to make it happen. Roz and the animals partied all night long. They were so busy singing and laughing and dancing that they didn't see the cargo ship as it sliced past the island. But the ship saw them. It saw the towering bonfire. It saw the robot. And then it quietly continued through the darkness. Wow, sounds like they had a fun party. Chapter 67, The Sunrise. By dawn, the bonfire had dwindled to a smoldering hill of ash. Everyone else had gone home, and only Roz and Brightbill remained in the meadow. They lay in the grass together, watching as the soft light of morning crept up from the horizon. And then Roz said, let us go for a walk. The robot and the goose hiked and flew up to their favorite spot on the grassy ridge. But then they kept going. They followed the ridge to the mountain and climbed all the way up to the Cra Craigie Peak, just in time to see the sunrise. I climbed up here once before, said Roz, as the sun's first rays warmed her body. I sat on this very rock, looked out at the island, and thought I always would be alone. But I was wrong. Are you happy, Ma? The robot thought for a moment. I am. I'm happy too. Bright Bill closed his eyes and felt the wind and the sun. There was a slight chill in the air that made him feel alive. Everything seemed just right. And then he heard a distant buzzing sound. The goose squinted to the south and saw a familiar shape in the sky. He turned to his mother and said, Ma, there's an airship flying this way. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen next. An airship. Chapter 68 the Ricos. The airship approached from the south like some giant migratory bird. The ship was a sleek white triangle with a single dark window facing forward. Three identical robots stared out the window. The robots resembled Roz, but they were bigger and bulkier and shinier. The word Rico was lightly etched into each of their torsos, followed by their individual unit number. They were Rico 1, Rico 2, and Rico 3. The Ricos flew in a low circle around the island. They saw a smoking hill of ash. They saw mysterious wooden domes. They saw four dead robots scattered across the shore. The airship hovered above the robot gravesite for a moment. Then it floated up over the island and lowered itself onto a small meadow at the foot of the mountain. The engines blasted air towards the ground, bending trees and tearing grass. Then the landing gear sank into the soil. The engines powered down and all was quiet. A door hummed open and out stepped the Ricos. They took several long strides into the meadow and stopped. A shadowy figure was lurking at the forest edge. The Ricos turned and faced it. They stood flushed together like a sparkling wall. And then the shadowy figure began to move. 
Out from the trees walked some sort of two-legged creature. It was dusty and dirty. Butterflies flitted around the flowers that sprouted from its body. One of its feet was made of wood. And then the creature spoke. Hello, my name is Roz. Thank you.